Hi everybody, I'm Joel Gordon. I'm with the Museum of Discovery and this is STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So today we're going to talk about radio and that means we're talking about radio waves. We're really talking about electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is all around us. Don't worry, it can be dangerous, but most of the time it's not. Sometimes it can be a little extreme, but the sun sends us EM radiation. The, the rainbows are made of electromagnetic radiation. So it's all around us. Radio waves are traveling through the air. In fact, they're one of the broadest spectrum of waves. So a radio wave can be as tiny as one millimeter wide or as big as 100,000 kilometers wide. So they're traveling through space, which means we can hear the sun. You can actually hear the sound of the sun sent to us in radio waves. Now, we can't actually hear a radio wave, but with a crystal like this, this is Galena. Galena is actually attenuated to a natural frequency that can receive and then rectify an electromagnetic radiation wave. How does it work? This guy named Bose, maybe you've heard of him? Like the speakers? Not the same guy. Bose actually figured out how to attenuate these crystals so that we could hear radio waves. He took the Galena crystals and he placed them between a couple of wires and it received those radio waves and those waves were rectified through the crystal into electronic pulses which we could hear. I'll show you how it's done. So I have built a crystal radio. No, not this kind of crystal. But it is a crystal radio. So here's what a crystal radio is. It receives radio waves and then rectifies those radio waves into an electronic signal that we can hear, which sounds kind of heavy, but it's okay. We'll explain it. I built a crystal radio. Isn't that cool? I'm so excited. I've never done one before. I, I know, everybody's saying, really, you never built a crystal radio before? But it's true, I've never built one and I always wanted to, so I did. We have basically a cardboard stand, a cardboard tube, and some wire. That's really it. In fact, the only thing that I really spent any money on was this little earpiece. It's just a hobby earpiece, and it cost me about $2. Now, everything else I just found, except for this diode, which I had laying around. So I took some telephone wire and stripped the insulation off. I wrapped my telephone wire around this cardboard tube, and then I used a little hot melt glue just to hold it in place. That's not even necessary. You could just put a couple of rubber bands at the end and that would be fine. One side of this runs off and down and runs over and to one side of my earpiece. The other end of the wire that I would twist on here and I'm using a 30 foot long piece of wire that runs off to a tree because it works best outside. The antenna receives the radio wave. It travels through the coil where it moves through different frequencies. It runs down here. Part of the signal goes to the earphones and then the other part of the signal is received on this piece of steel wire that has a paper clip that floats back and forth so that I can tune my signal. That runs down through the diode where, it, where the signal is rectified and then that runs out through the earpiece and we can listen to it. So you're probably wondering what a diode is. Well, it's just an electrical component and it's very inexpensive. But here's what it does, essentially. It sort of acts like like a flush in your toilet. Now the flush in your toilet only lets water go down. It doesn't let water come back up. So the signal can only go in one direction through a diode. So anything that's coming back in, it stops. But any signal that's coming out, it runs it through. And it takes that radiation and turns it into little tiny electrical impulses. Now, I talked about sound once before, and I told you sound is vibration. When you have an electrical impulse, it travels through the wire and to a little tiny diaphragm, sort of like your eardrum, and it makes that diaphragm vibrate. That turns that electrical impulse into vibration. That becomes sound, and we can hear it. And that's what the diode does. All right, so here's what's cool about crystal radios. The first crystal radio was really built way back in the very early 1900s, and it was a guy named Bose. Now, Marconi's the one who gets all the credit for actually creating the radio, but here's the deal. Around 1972, Nikola Tesla, who's a personal hero of mine, even though he was a little crazy, Nikola Tesla actually was posthumously awarded the patent for the radio because his Tesla coil, and all the nerds out there know what I'm talking about, the Tesla coil is actually a form of radio. 
Now, during World War II, we already had good radios, but because the troops couldn't carry them into the trenches, a lot of times they would try and create their own little crystal receivers so that they could listen to radio without actually pinpointing where their position is because the signal is so weak. There's no battery on this at all. There's no power. It's simply getting the radio waves, receiving them, and then that diode is turning it into an electrical impulse that we can hear through the earpiece. What they did, and this is the really cool part, instead of using a diode, which they of course couldn't find, they took an old razor blade with rust on it and a pencil. They connected one side of the wire to the pencil and the other side of the wire to the razor blade and they would touch the point of the pencil to the rust on the razor blade and it literally created a point diode. So where the point of the pencil touched the rust, it created a diode that would rectify the signal. Isn't that cool? So they literally were listening to radio on a little tiny crystal unit like this, usually a piece of copper wire wrapped around a bottle or any sort of insulating material, and they could hear the radio without the enemy being able to pinpoint their position. So if you're ready to build your own crystal radio set, you can order one online and you can get all the parts, or you can just get online, find the instructions. They're everywhere. There are whole websites that are devoted to the crystal radio. So get out there, find what you need, build your own crystal radio, and start listening. It's really cool. I'm Joel Gordon. I'm with the Museum of Discovery. You've been watching STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. If you like us, like us, and make sure you subscribe and give me your comments so I know what you want to talk about, because that's what I want to talk about. Now, I'm going to go back to listening to my radio. I'll see you later.